The banks delay open banking. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here, and I hope you're enjoying your Saturday. I thought today we would have a look at this article from the ABC about open banking and how apparently it will threaten the dominance of the big four. Now, I'm a little skeptical about that. Let me know what you think in the comments below, guys. Do you think the dominance of the big four will be delayed or will be threatened? Let's have a look at this. Open banking, one of the most seismic changes to hit the financial services industry, giving customers more power and better enabling them to switch providers has been delayed. It's been delayed. I guess it is the banks. They, they, what they want to do is they want to get as many of your products and services with them because then it just becomes more of a hassle to change. And one strategy that you should do is there's a danger if you have all of your services with the one bank, there's all money clauses where they can pretty much just consolidate all of your money into pay off one debt. So even take your business or anything else. So it can get messy, guys. It can get messy. The competition watchdog has today pushed back the introduction of the system, which essentially gives customers ownership of their transaction data. You'd think we'd have it anyway. To allow more time for testing of security and privacy protections. Oh, that's nice that they're concerned about our security and privacy. Open banking means that first the Commonwealth Bank, Westpac, ANZ and NAB, and eventually all banks will have to make credit card, deposit and transaction data available if customers request it by July. From November, they must add in mortgage data as well. Now, perhaps it's just my naivete, but I would have assumed that they already should have done that. The system was supposed to be in place for the big four by February. So, I mean, you've got the chance then to go to any one of the big four banks, which are exactly the same, with minor differences. Well, which which scandal do you want to support? You know, do you want a bank that's funne- funneling money overseas? Or do you want one that's ripping off pensioners? Or do you, want, do you want a bank, you know, do you want your bank to be taking advantage of people in remote communities and selling them you know, dodgy insurance? Pick your scandal, guys. We've got all choices for you here in Australia. So... The consumer data right is a complex but fundamental competition and consumer reform, and we are committed to delivering it only after we are confident the system is resilient, user-friendly, and properly tested, the ACCC Commissioner Sarah Court said in a statement. Robust privacy protection and information security are core features of the CDR, and stabilizing appropriate regulatory settings and IT infrastructure cannot be rushed. Well, you know, I commend that. That is a good understanding and learning from lessons. If you think back to when they had the payroll systems debacle here in Queensland, where they, you know, the, the government department that rolled it out was literally having a party and celebrating the implementing implementation of the system while people in the health sector couldn't even get paid. It's just nuts. It's just crazy. So it's good that they're taking their time with this. So what is open banking? The relationship between banks and their customers is generally thought about in terms of money. From next year, it'll become about power. This is potentially earth-shattering for the financial services industry, said Professor Deborah Healy, a competition law specialist who has researched why so few customers shift banks. Well, guys, you know, share in the comments if you shift banks. When's the last time you did? If you've spreaded your resources out among the different banks. I'm sure that a lot of people would have, particularly if they're concerned with the potential for banks to to collapse or with fail in legislation. Potentially some people spread their wealth out of different ones. Do you separate your business or your personal? I, I'm probably very, very lazy. <laughs> I need to I need to split it out. One thing uh, I always would tell people was one advantage to having your super with the bank is that you can see it. I know that's bad because it's all in the one thing. But often I, I had colleagues who'd never gotten paid their super from their employer and they, they never saw it. They didn't, couldn't tell. How often you check it up or get a letter? We're well, here if it's on your, you know, your bank website, you can tell if it's appeared or not. Because these are very important decisions people are making and I think they will put time and effort into making those changes if in fact they see that something better is on offer. 
which is true. I, I, I tend to ring up and just ask for deductions in my mortgage interest rate and threaten to leave. And you know, every now and then that gets me a nice little discount. Open banking means that at the touch of a button, customers can choose to share their transaction data, including their spending history and direct debits with a third party. Companies can then analyze that information to offer better deals and incentives to switch. Or you could just give them printouts, but I guess, you know, this will make it easier. But perhaps, perhaps, or you could sell your data. So here's a question. Here's a question I will put to you in the audience. Would you give up this data? Would you sell this data to a third party if you got a better deal on your mortgages? If they say, we'll give you 0.1% off if you allow us to sell your marketing data to third parties. Would you do it? Would you do it? Let me know in the, in the comments below because it's interesting. I bet you some people would. So how has this happened elsewhere? With the popularity of mobile phones took off in the 1990s and early 2000s, Australian consumers were stuck. Companies owned the actual phone number and new customers rarely wanted to wear the hassle of changing it when they switched providers. But in 2001, portability legislation changed everything, allowing customers to switch providers, keep their details and move on as if nothing had happened. Last year, more than 2.3 million customers, almost 10% of the market shifted. The UK introduced open banking almost two years ago. The founder of Peak Body Open Data Australia, James Leach, said the use of the technology was still being worked out but it was already getting customers to think differently. The potential for people to move between brands at the ease or the ease of for people to be able to have products with multiple brands and still be able to track that through a single app is real. And that's happening right now, she said. The old days where people have all their eggs in one basket because it's easier is not going to be the future. In the UK, online only neobanks, fin, uh, financial tech, fintech companies and aggregators have embraced the technology because it enables them to convenient to convenience rust on oh, to convenience rust on bank customers to exam or convince sorry to convince rusted on bank customers to examine their accounts and see if they can get a better deal. Fintechs are chomping at the bit. It's going to be a bit of a game changer, Miss Leach said excitedly. What it is is you are being at you being able to determine if you want a third party, if you want an app that's going to make your life easier to navigate or offer you better rights, for instance, to access your credit, follow your banking history. It's about giving customers that choice. It tends to all just line up with the, the reduction in, you know, moving more people into this digital economy, more so you can be tracked, you know, bringing in the pay ID, nudging people in a particular way, bringing in the cash ban. So why don't people switch banks? Because it's a pain in the ass. That's probably why, but here we go. It's something of a joke in the financial services industry that people are statistically more likely to change their spouse than their bank. Well, that's, that's pretty depressing. Paul Ranson, Chief Executive Officer of Tasmania's Bank of Us, said the mantra had a ring of truth. You tend to move based on life cycle events. So is it your first personal loan? or your first home loan, it's probably a big life cycle event, he said. Mr. Ranson predicted open banking will take three to five years to bed down, but sees benefits for institutions like his eight branch network. I think what we'll see is that it's going to be become simpler for consumers to really understand. Am I getting the best value for the products, he said. It's going to be the start of our overcoming the inertia that people have about moving from one provider to another. There are no clear figures on how often customers switch banks, but better offers and the ease of switching would change that. Sally McKenzie, strategic director for the Customer Owned Banking Association, said the greatest benefit would be in customers receiving information about products tailored to their personal financial circumstances. Customers will have the right, it'll be their choice, whether they want to share their data. It'll be entirely up to them. But if they do that, they'll be able to receive advice on what the best credit card is, for example, based on whether they pay it off at the end of the month or carry over the balance, she said. Professor Haley said switching brought competition and efficiency to the banking system, 
but complex documentation made it hard for customers to judge if they could be, get a better deal elsewhere. Open banking may change that. The days when your bank was your bank for life, I think, are long gone anyway. But I think there will be a lot more movement and it will also stimulate competition, she said. Even the threat of switching is very important in terms of having an efficient competitive market. Banking is just the start of, of the consumer data rights. The teething problems will not give much comfort to large utilities because after the bank banking is better down, CDR will be rolled out for energy and telecommunications customers as well. So, guys, what do you think? Do you think this will encourage more competition? Or will it be just another revenue of data for organizations to mine to sell more things to you? Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you're a fan of the channel, please like, share, and subscribe. If you want to help us produce more content, I have a Patreon where you can make a small monthly donation. We also have referral links at Amazon, eBay, and Independent Reserve. And we have our very own handmade pocket square merch on our blog. Take care, everyone. Have a great day. And I will talk to you all later. Bye for now.